Let's shed some light on what's underneath these things. Pop the cover off. There are two kinds of snowblowers out there, gas or electric. And it's no secret that gas snowblowers need to be maintenance. Oil changes, greasing the augers, and draining the carb at the end of the season, among other things. But some out there are claiming that battery powered snowblowers are maintenance free. Are they though? Let's find out. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. I came across an article on Snowblower Direct's website that said, electric or battery powered snowblowers require nearly no maintenance at all. The article went on to state, aside from very occasionally replacing worn parts, there are no oil changes or spark plugs to worry about, so it's more or less plug and go. Cordless battery operated snowblowers also don't require any regular maintenance, but may need replacement batteries over the years. And here's the kicker comment they made. Gas snowblowers are the only kinds that really require maintenance. Hold up. I'm gonna stop this article right there. And since a lot of brands are jumping on the bandwagon and developing these snowblowers and requiring dealers to carry at least one battery option in their stores, it's time we made a few things clear. And just so we're clear here, this video will be primarily discussing two-stage snowblowers. When we look at the auger housing on a battery-powered snowblower, they're pretty much the same model to model. The chutes may vary slightly, the impeller designs are pretty much the same, the handlebar assembly coming up to the user is usually made of metal with a plastic deck cover, and plastic controls. But besides the battery housing, not much else has radically changed. Let's start up here in the front. Shear pins. These could break just like they do on any other gas model. And you should check them throughout the season a couple of times to make sure that they haven't snapped. And if they have, you may see that one or a couple of your augers aren't spinning. Your augers. You should make sure that they're lubricated at least once a season to prevent them from seizing to the auger shaft. If they were to seize and you hit something hard like a rock or a fallen tree branch that was buried underneath the snow, your shear pin wouldn't be able to break possibly causing damage to your gearbox. I did a video recently on how to lubricate these types of augers without grease fittings, and I'll have that video linked down below in the description. These bushings here on the end could use some lubrication at least once a season as well. Now let's talk about your gearbox. A broken gearbox is an expensive and time-consuming repair. Whether it's battery-powered or gas-powered, these gearboxes are pretty much the same in their purpose to spin your auger shafts. You should check the fluid level inside at least once a season to make sure that they're well lubricated and avoid issues. And to avoid issues with the YouTube algorithm, would you mind taking a super quick second to hit that like button down below? Thank you, I totally appreciate it. Moving a little lower here, you have your skids. Eventually, these wear down. After a couple of seasons, you'll have to replace them with some new ones. And if they get knocked out of place after hitting a curb or a large bump in your driveway, you'll have to readjust them. Not a huge deal, but it's just one of those things that you'll have to maintain just like you would on a gas snowblower. Now let's see what it looks like underneath the belt cover. And... Off it comes. What do you know? A belt, just like on a gas snowblower. Who knew? But the one on a battery model seems to be much smaller. Over time, belts wear out. They can stretch and they can even break. They need to be adjusted or replaced and should be checked at least once a season to make sure they're in proper working order. Now that's fine, but you'll have to get in there and what you have to do is you have to separate this model in half, unbolt it on both sides down on the bottom, separate it into two pieces, get in there, make your change, and then reassemble the whole unit. Not a difficult process, but this is something just like on a gas snowblower that you'll have to do from time to time. Next up, the tires. These are the same kinds of tires that you're gonna see on many gas powered models. Tires are tires, they have air inside, and once or twice Twice a season, you have to check the air in these tires to make sure they're properly inflated. They can also crack and wear down, and just like on a gas model, you'll need new ones. And up we go. On a lot of battery powered models, you'll need to take the wheels off in order to get to the drive motor. And if these wheels were to become seized to the shaft, your repair job just became 10 times longer. Now here's something interesting, plastic spacers. These are becoming pretty common on machines nowadays. The axles that the wheels spin on should be greased or lubricated to prevent seizing. You can use something like anti-seize to prevent them from sticking. A quick coat is all you need. Lather it up really quick. And a word to the wise, this stuff is very messy. You will find it on everything after you use it. Slide back on your spacer, give it a spin, and on goes the wheel. Reinsert the pin, lock it down, and you're good to go. And don't forget to do the same thing on the other side. Now before we move to the drive system on this snowblower, check this out. Most snowblowers are made of metal, at least where it matters on the auger housing and the drive system housing. But it's not just any metal, it's thin metal, thin enough to bend it with a simple set of pliers. And it's not just this snowblower. Every battery powered snowblower so far that I have seen 
is made this way. Thin metal because it's lighter. Think about it, a heavier snowblower is harder to move. If it's harder to move, it's gonna drain your battery a lot faster. So they need to make these machines as light as possible for minimal power usage. Well, you might be saying, JB, it's lighter, it's thinner. So what? Well, it is a huge plus for somebody who's not as strong. And if you aren't strong enough to move a heavy snowblower, I understand where you're coming from. But this is thin metal, and it can be found on a lot of new snowblowers made today, including gas models, and it has to be protected. This metal can rust out easily, and you'll wanna spray it down with some kind of rust inhibitor spray to prevent any corrosion. Wipe down any panels and spray it in any crevices to stop rust in its tracks. This will also help prevent snow from sticking too. Now, I will definitely give battery-powered snowblowers the win here. When you tip a gas-powered snow snowblower into the service position like this, sometimes gas and even oil can leak out. So way to go batteries on this one. But here's something I wanted to show you. Let's have a look at the drive system. Let's take out these bolts. By the way, plastic. I'm seeing this more and more on new models by many brands. Let's shed some light on what's underneath these things. Pop the cover off. Would you have a look at that? Just a motor under there giving these wheels a spin. That little motor is all that's powering these big wheels. I mean, look at this. I can fit my whole hand in here. No problem. No problem. No problem. What I want you to keep in mind here, what I'm showing you, isn't just related to just this specific brand of snowblowers. This is common across many different models and brands. Many battery-powered snowblowers out there have similar designs. I found an Ego Blower parts diagram with a very similar setup. Many people are saying Ego is the best of the best. Well. Here you go. I've seen some industrial motors over the years that were a little bigger than this, and they weren't just powerful, they were far more powerful than this will ever be. And eventually those motors, they broke. So how long do you think something like this is gonna last? On a gas-powered snowblower, you're gonna see a lot of metal moving parts, including a friction disc, and that's the old school way of shifting gears, and it's tried and true. And to my surprise, Toro is actually still using the friction disc on their battery-powered models. It's the same kind of setup that they have on their gas models. Now, I am happy to see a friction disc on those battery-powered models. It's an old school design that just works, but it needs to be maintained just like on a gas model. You gotta properly lube up the friction disc shaft and change out the friction disc when it eventually wears out. Now, I am a big fan of lubricating just about any gear I see, but look, this is how a lot of things are on many current battery-powered models. Plastic. Do you think that this will wear out over time? Let me know down below in the comments. Friction discs are quickly becoming a thing of the past, it looks like. Now let's move up to the user interface. Ryobi, Ego, and many other brands are starting to go with all this plastic here on the controls and up on the dash too. Again, anything to lighten these units because if they become too heavy, they become more difficult to move and drain the battery. In my experience, plastic parts that get moved around a lot tend to wear out quite fast. I foresee a lot of problems going forward with these plastic control decks. So. Are battery-powered snowblowers maintenance-free? No, no they're not. I completely disagree with this article. When battery-powered snowblowers started hitting the shelves, so to speak, years ago, I noticed that a lot of brands on their websites and on signage in stores saying that they were maintenance-free. But manufacturers recently have gotten away from saying this. Now I see them saying things like no fuss or less hassle. Whether a manufacturer or a dealer says that these machines are maintenance-free, just know they're uh, lying to you. And avoiding these points of maintenance could significantly shorten the overall lifespan of your battery powered snowblower. Word to the wise, maintain it. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the garage.